My name is Hope Howie. If I could grow a magical plant, I could grow a bouncing balloon bush because I love playing with balloons and they'll never pop. Kids and experts can collaborate to make Kenyan food secure by reducing waste. If I could grow a magical plant, I could grow a sparkling star vine to light the night sky and to make bedtime more exciting. I want to be a farmer because I'll be a guardian of the environment and take care of our home. I want to be a farmer because I love watching plants grow just like I've grown over the years. If I grow up, I want to be a farmer because um, farmers get to play in the mud and that's the best kind of play. Kids and experts can collaborate by making Kenya food secure by supporting local farmers. My name is Robin Bagaya and if I could grow a magical plant, I could grow a music, music note plant to make the most beautiful melodies all day long. I want to be a farmer because every day will be an adventure discovering new things. Kids and uh, experts can collaborate to make Kenya food secure by learning and sharing ideas together. Hello kids! Welcome to Watoto Shambani. This is Nikon Logopa Academy. Welcome! Hey kids, guess what? Farming kelts and spinach in Kenya is super important. These veggies are like little superheroes for our health. And when we grow them, we take care of the earth. Plus, we can share our yummy harvests with others and help end hunger and food insecurity in Kenya. And you know what? It's a whole lot of fun too. So let's be veggie superheroes and grow a greener, healthier Kenya together. Here is our big small interview with expert freedom to help us understand how to plant kelts and spinach and maintain them in our farms. My name is Hope Howie. The question I want to ask is how do we make manure for kale plants? Manure, we have two types. We have organic manure and we have inorganic manures. Organic manures is the one that we make at home. Inorganic manures are the one that we buy from the agrofets. As farmers, you can decide which one you're going to use, organic manure and inorganic manure. We as farmers, we are going organically and the consumers, they want to eat the skuma wheat and the spinach, which is grown using organic manures. Organic manure, you can get it from our the animals that we have at home, like cows, the chicken. Which animals, again, can we be able to get organic manures from? Apart from the one that I've mentioned, which has cows and hens. Yes? Sheep, we can also get organic manure from sheep. Donkey, goats. So organic manure, we can get it from the animals that we have, we have at home, domestic animals, and also from the compost manure. Compost manure is from the uh, the stalks, the maize stalk that we have at home. When you are planted your maize, yeah? yeah, you can be able to make manure from your maize stalks. You harvest your maize, maize stalks, you can be able to decompose that one to make manure. Farmyard manure is the one that you are mentioned we get from the animals. Yeah, green manure, you plant vegetables like the one that we have here when they are exhausted, you have harvested and you cannot be able to harvest anymore. Here, yeah? from there we can be able to make organic manure. In our farm here, as we are going to see, we use only organic manure. Here, yeah? I believe that once I have answered the questions of the manure that we use. Manures, they make our crops look healthy and the leaves are good. They are green in color, not like the one that you can be able to see, they are very small. But when you're using organic manures, you are able to have good vegetables, which are healthy. And as we know, people are going organic. Organic, no diseases that you are going to get. Why do we make manure for kale? The question is, why do we use manure? Yeah? 
for us to be able to have healthy skuma wiki and spinach. When you go to the farm, you can be able to see the crops that farmers have used manure and the ones that have not used manure. You are able to get more products. And as you make more products, you are going to have more money in your pocket. So as farmers, let's use organic manures as we grow our spinach at the same time when we are growing our skuma wiki so that we can be able to get healthy crops which are needed in the market for us to be able to have that high demand and have a lot of money at the end of the month. Good, any other question? My name is Stephanie Ryan and I wanted to ask how do seeds for kelts look like? Most of us, we, have, we tend to believe that Skumawiki does not produce seeds, it does. It does from our kelts give you leave it to grow. It's going to produce seeds, and those are the seeds that you are going to harvest nicely, dry them, and those are the same same seeds we are going to plant. At the same time, you can still go to the agrofets. As farmers, if you want, you don't want to plant the one that you have harvested from your skuma wiki. You can go to the agrofet buy the seeds for you to plant. The one that you are going to get in the agrofets are of high quality. That's how you are going to have good crops in the market. When you have done that, you are able to have high quality products, like the way you are going to see our skuma week here. My name is Andy. How long does it take to, for manure to be ready? Yeah, it depends on which type of manure. We have said organic manure and inorganic manures. Inorganic manures is the one that you go to the agrofet buy, apply to your skuma wiki. And the organic manures comes in three forms. We have compost manure, we have farmyard manure, we have mulches and we have green manure. Yeah, for the organic manure it takes the longest time to supply nutrients to your crops. For example, when you are dealing with the skuma wiki and the spinach that we are doing here, Organic manure takes a long time. I applied today, the next season, the next plant is when it's, we are going to make use of that one. And it does not spread diseases or the weeds to the farm. So green manure takes the longest time to supply nutrients to the soil. Yes, I believe about the manures we've understood. Yeah, organic manure takes the longest time to supply nutrients to the soil. That is, if I apply it today in my skuma wiki, organic manure, it's going to be used in the next season. Yeah? So it takes the longest time compared to inorganic manure, the CAN that I will go to the supermarket, uh, to the agrofet and buy. How long does it take for kelts to get ready? The kelts from transplanting, transplanting, that is you prepared your nasal nicely, you planted your seeds for spinach or skuma week there, uh, it will take three weeks for them to be ready to transplanting. Once you have transplanted to the seed bed, it's going to take three months. Yeah, it's going to take three months for you to be able to continue harvesting. Like the spinach, spinach takes like one month. From transplanting, one month you are able to eat your spinach spinach. My name is Ellen to, and I'm going to ask what what conditions are favorable for spinach and kelts to grow? The conditions favorable for the spinach to grow. One thing for us to be able to know as farmers, the spinach requires a lot of water. Yeah, so the condition necessary for the spinach to be able to do well, water should be there and the soil. The, the soil should be fertile. We've said water, you must have water for you to be able to grow spinach because without water, we cannot be able to live. The way the plants, without water, they cannot be able to do well. And the spinach do not require hot water. So the spinach requires the climate which is not that hot, yeah, for them to be able to do well, okay? What about the people who live in dry areas? How can they get their skuma wikis and scales watered? Good question, Stephen. We have those people who are living in the countries which have low rainfall patterns. Even in our country, 
we have those seasons where there is no water. What is it that you are going to do? Then you are going to know that once in the next minute. You do irrigation. And I believe we know what is irrigation. Irrigation is supplying water where there is no water. Our plants here, the one that we have here, we do irrigation because the last three weeks there was no rain. So it's good for you to do irrigation in the countries where there's no water, there's no rainfall, but you can be able to uh, look for water in many ways. One, digging the boreholes. From the boreholes, you can be able to irrigate your crops, get crops day in, day out in the market. So through irrigation, uh, as young farmers were able to eat Skuma Wiki do, today, tomorrow, as it is called Skuma Wiki, it's the Skuma which which pushes that week so we eat it on a daily basis for us farmers what we are going to do we use the little water that we have to supply to do irrigation to our crops at the end of the day we are able to have crops in the market doing irrigation i've said we do irrigation even at home we have we've seen we have the one that we are planted in the containers we have the spinach that we have planted in the containers we don't wait for rain we what we do we do irrigation, irrigating those crops. So through irrigation, we're able to have crops today and tomorrow you have your skuma week, you have your spinach. My name is Joshua. I wanted to ask why plastic is not used while making compost manure. Plastic is not, uh, the question that he has asked, why is plastic not used as manure? Plastic, as we know, we are doing away with plastics. Nowadays, we are not even using the polythene bags that we are using. Why? Because when they get to the soil, they pollute the soil. Yeah? So the moment you are going to use polythenes as manure, you are polluting your soil. So the crops, the skumawiki cannot be able to grow well because you polluted that soil using polythenes as manure. So as farmers, the polythene that we have, the best way of Dealing with the polythene that we have at home is to recycle. We recycle the polythenes not to get to our farms because they pollute. Once they are in our farms, the roots of our skumawiki cannot be able to penetrate nicely. So you polluted the, 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 the soil, the crops that you are going to have, they are not going to be healthy. And for us, it's good to eat healthy vegetables. The seeds of skumawiki, they are very small. The size of this soil, they are very small. So that's when you are preparing, when you are preparing the soil. The, the soil should be very fine because the skumawiki seeds are very small. Here we use the big particles for planting the seeds when you're preparing your nursery bed, they will not germinate. Why? Because you did not prepare the soil up to the fine tilt very small particles for them to be able to germinate. And once you have planted the skumawiki seeds, they should be watered nicely, make a shade for them, for them to be able to germinate nicely. Yeah, I've said the seeds are very small. So what is it that you are going to do? Prepare the soil up to the fine tilt, up to the small particles for them to be able to germinate yeah and have crops in the market yeah we are going to take a short break yeah and when we come back we are going to see how to grow the skumawiki commonly called as scales and the spinach Welcome back from the break. Yeah, as I said earlier, we are going to do practically how we are going to plant spinach. Yeah, for you to be able to plant spinach, 
what you require, you go to the agrofet first, buy the spinach seeds, depending on the size of your land. Yeah? So your boat, you go home, prepare a nursery bed. A nursery bed is where you are going to plant your seeds until transplanting. Transplanting can take three weeks from planting. So once you have planted your seeds, to transplant it will take three weeks. That's what we have done. Uh, earlier on, we had gone with the Beacon of Hope Academy, young farmers. We had gone, transplanted the seedlings that we had planted earlier. That's what we are holding. And I'm going to show you how you are going to plant your spinach. Here with me, I'm ready to demonstrate how we are going to plant our spinach. So those ones who are watching us from home, go with me, I'm going to show you how we are going to plant our spinach. As I said, I'm expert Frida. So first of all, we prepare the seed bed. Here now it's our seed bed. We have transplanted our spinach from the nursery bed. We are going to see how we are going to plant in our seed bed. The spinach that we had transplanted. The learners with me and those ones who are watching me from home, I'm going to demonstrate how we are going to plant our spinach. Yeah? So go with me. First of all, prepare your seed bed until it has a fine tilth. That is, the soil should be very fine for the seeds and the seedlings to be able to grow well. So first, what we are going to do, we are going to dig a small hole. Make sure the hole is not going to cover the whole plant. Yeah? The hole should only cover where the roots, where the stem is starting from. Make sure you cover up to where the leaves are starting from, not the whole plant. Yeah? For those ones who are watching us from home, I believe you are able to see. So get your jember. Dig a hole where you are dug before. That's a hole where we are going to plant our spinach before you put your seedling, the one that you have transplanted, the one that you see learners are having. First, add some water. Hold it nicely with your hands, a small hole, put it there and then cover with soil. Yeah, after you have done that, you have covered that one with soil, add water. The, as I said earlier, we don't wait for the rains to come for us to be able to plant our spinach. Yeah, we do irrigation so that you can be able to supply your vegetables to the market, even for you to be able to eat at home day in, day out, because we don't depend on the rains. Nowadays, the rain, we don't even know when it's going to come. So it's good for us, as I said, we do irrigation. Yeah, and the type of irrigation that we have, we have drip irrigation where you can be able to go to the hardware, buy the pipes, come install them in your farm so that you can be able to supply the water in drips. Because when you're using drip irrigation, you don't waste a lot of water. Yeah, you've seen, yeah, uh, the seedlings are planted, you add water, and then after that you can be able to look for some dry leaves, dry leaves and then cover for the water not to evaporate very fast. So you look for dry leaves, cover your plants, that is you are going to prevent the water that you have added not to evaporate very fast. Now for the learners with me, I believe you've seen, yeah? Yes. Now uh, we can be able to do it practically. We start from one to the other. From one plant to the other plant, make sure it is like uh, 30 centimeters. So another hole to be there. 